All right, today I'm meeting up with Colin who went from $8,000 worth of debt from dropshipping to recently making over $116,000 in a single month. On this channel, I've documented my dropshipping experience and so far it's been failure after failure. So I thought it'd be really inspiring to meet up with somebody who's actually seen some crazy success and find out what are the differences between the thousands of people that get into this business every single year and fail and the few people that start to see those six and seven figure numbers just from selling products online. So let's get into it. What's been the journey up until now? Like how many stores did you start? When did you start? Yeah, so I started back in, I think 2021, about two years ago when I was in university. Um, I was in, I was, like I said, a science major, so I didn't uh, really have much experience in business or anything like that. I've probably launched like 20 stores since then, like a lot. I've failed the shit ton of times. I've succeeded a little bit. I've had some minor success here and there. Um, most of the time I've had success has been not profitable, like kind of how you were saying with you. Yep. Um, so like I've made like thousands of dollars before in a month, profited like negative $300. You know, I've gone dead, I've gone actual dead broke like three or four times. I was so broke that I couldn't afford ads, I couldn't afford cost of goods, I couldn't afford anything to do e-commerce anymore. Did you go broke dropshipping? I went broke dropshipping, yeah. I went broke dropshipping. I was actually working full time. I got laid off, but that whole time I was working, I was spending like 110% of my income on e-commerce, right? Failing over and over and over again. Just learning though. So I always have this mentality that like, I don't care how many times I fail. As long as I'm spending money on this, I know not a penny is being wasted. I knew like, this is what I wanted to do. So it doesn't matter how much money I spent on it. But ultimately, you know, when I got laid off, I had like no money to my name pretty much, like zero, like almost zero savings. And uh, now I'm, you know, I just made 116,000 US last month in the business which feels great. I went from negative 8,000 debt in September to October, November, and I think it's over like 150,000 uh, US. So Jesus Christ. that's obviously not profit. That's, you know, yeah. revenue. Yeah, but, of course, of yeah. course. Um, so without getting too deep into it, obviously we're not gonna talk about the product that you're selling because you know how the space is. As soon as somebody sees something that's working. I've had so many of my ads ripped off already, bro, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have to gatekeep a little bit, you know. Can you talk about what niche it's in and why do you think that the product that you're running now is the one that finally gave you that first big success? Yeah, so it's in the beauty niche. Um, and I've, I've gone in, in and out of like a lot of different niches. My favorites are beauty and health and fitness. Those are what I've like, like health and wellness. Uh, which I think is really great to get into now if you guys are about to get into something because of the new year's coming and everything. I think the main reason why it's like succeeded for me is, um, you know, I've obviously learned a lot in the past two years of doing this stuff. You know, my marketing angles have changed. You know, I used to just kind of list out the product, you know, what the product was, what it does, and then the offer, right, and my marketing angles. Now, I kind of just focus on, you know, the needs and the wants of, of whoever is buying my thing, right? Because, for example, I'll ask you this. On Instagram and TikTok, how many products do you buy a day? I, I, personally, I don't buy any. Me neither. Yeah. So most people don't, right? Not, everyone's not just fishing out money nowadays on social media platforms because first of all, our economy sucks. There's not, there's not a lot of huge money in the market right now. We're in a bear market. I try to just, whenever I test a product, I try to make sure that like when I'm going into it, first of all, it's brandable. I can make a brand out of it. I'm not doing this for the short term, get rich quick, whatever. I'm doing this because I want to make brands. You need to look like you're the only one selling it. No matter how many people are selling a product, if you look like you invented that product and your name, your website, your offer, everything just matches up, you're gonna get the majority of the sales. That's just kind of how it works. Yeah. So trying to make your ads, you know, personally resonate with your target audience is the number one way that, in my personal experience, will make you, you know, gain traction in your in your business. Yo, I wanna take a quick second to shout out the sponsor of this video, AutoDS. If you guys have been into dropshipping for a little while, then you know that one of the biggest issues with this business is finding good suppliers with high quality products and fast shipping times. So AutoDS is an app that you can use on Shopify that simplifies this whole order process for you. They have a marketplace where you can find a bunch of viral products that are sourced from the US where you can get two to three day shipping times. On top of that, if you can't find a specific product, you can use one of their sourcing agents, which will find the best supplier to source your product for you. And from there, you can set up automatic order fulfilling so as soon as you get an order on your store the request is automatically sent to a supplier and the status is updated as in progress shipped or delivered and it just saves you a ton of time instead of having to manually fulfill all of your orders every single time that somebody buys your products using a software like this is pretty crucial especially once you start getting a lot of orders in it will help you stay on top of your revenue and what the profit on each one of your items sold is and on top of that if you're just new and you're looking for products to sell they have a TikTok ad spy section and this will help you figure out what products and 
creatives are working right now. So once again, thanks to AutoDS. And if you guys want to try them out for free for 30 days, you can check out the link in my description. All right, let's get back into it. If something's already selling in the current market and there is a demand for that product, you should be able to sell it too, right? It's just a matter of how you appear to your audience, how if you appear like you're actually a legitimate business or if you're just some shitty dropshipper, and uh, how good the offer is, how, how do they perceive your offer? Do they think, okay, 20 bucks for how many uses out of this product? You know, like, am I gonna use this every day? Or is this gonna be like a you know, crystal ball that lights up that's like super cool, but I can get it from Chapters or Indigo. It's like, yeah, yeah. they're not gonna buy that, right? So it's, it's all about perceived value and it's all about um, your marketing and how well you can communicate your, like how your product will benefit somebody's life. For example, you have a cool beard, right? If you see a cool ad for a, a Manscaped thing, you might, you might watch that ad. You might, it personally resonates with you, right? And I know I'm being like super vague and, and you know, I remember watching these types of videos when I was first starting off and I'm like, well, they just tell me, give me the sauce, man. Like, how do I do it? Like, what's, what's, the, what's the secret? There just is no secret. You just gotta go through it and you gotta be consistent and you have to be a little bit crazy to like go through all this with zero success and then something finally happens and you're like, holy shit, like it was all worth it. So you just had your, for your first big success, what do you say, you did 116K so far in the past month? 100, almost 117, 117 US, yeah. I would be living in Canada, so it's actually a lot better yeah. obviously to sell in US than to sell in Canadian, but. So when you, uh, when you get to this position, what are the types of issues that you're facing? Is it, is it scalability? Is it There's money? There's a lot, issues? there's so many issues, dude. Yeah, the, the number one issue has been capital for sure finding credit cards at my young age that will like fund me enough money to you know, spend tens of thousands of dollars a week just on expenses, like it's hard. So I've had to help find help from my family to, to, to help me out with this stuff. My mentor actually, uh, Tuzer, told me that I should be doing like 20K days right now, but because of uh, my lack of capital and my lack of like, I went into this journey with a negative $8,000. I, I haven't been able to scale pretty much at all. Like this, this the whole income has been purely off of like pretty much the same um, spend every week. I've just gained a, gained a lot of traction organically now and um, my ads are performing quite well. So, but you know, your ads do die off and especially with TikTok, the ad lifespan is a lot shorter than like Facebook. So I have to continue to make ads. Cause it's, it's, it's like, people just think you find a winning product and you can just sit back, relax, everything's cool. It's like, no, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And I'm still working, I'm probably working harder now than I was before. Taking you back to, you know, figuring out if a product is still worth running or not, like you said, people quit too early yeah. instead of trying to play it out and trying different marketing angles and, and finding a way to actually br uh, bring value to the person watching. But how do you actually decide to kill a product? Cause like, for example, my, the last video that I did in dropshipping, I had a product that made like, uh, like 12 sales in the first like three days or whatever. So it was a good sign. It was like one of the best signs I've had Start, since I started dropshipping, it was like the first time I actually had back-to-back uh, -back profitable days. And all of those were coming from one ad. But as soon as that ad started to die out and I tested 10 different ads, none of those were performing as well as the first one. So I killed the product. So in, in that case, how would you approach that? Do you think that, that it's a good time to kill the product and I just got lucky with that one ad? Or uh, is it worth it to keep trying different things? So there's a lot there that I would need to um Unpackage. First of all, how many product or how many uh, creatives did you test? Probably te probably ten altogether. Okay, so whenever I test a product, I test thirty to sixty, like off the rip. I, I test so many because it really only takes one creative to be profitable. But like the first thing you need to realize, you can't be making or, or relying on like a twenty dollar profit anymore. Profit margin. It needs to be like at least thirty, forty dollars. There's like a give and a take there because on TikTok it's hard to kind of sell higher ticket items, and it's a lot easier to sell like lower ticket items. So it's a lot easier to sell a twenty dollar product in TikTok than it is a sixty dollar product. Where would you say yours is? Mine's in between there. So I, I sell mine for, I won't say the exact number, but in between twenty and sixty. You know, my margins aren't like crazy good. Like my, I think my profit margins are about uh, they they kind of range from twenty to forty five percent. They go in and out of that, depending on how many creatives I'm, I'm testing and how like, because when you test new creatives, a lot of the time, some of them will fail. And you'll just spend money and you'll just waste money. And you're not actually wasting money though. You're finding out what new creatives work and what don't, right? So a lot of the people who, you know, try it out, they'll launch a couple. I get a bunch of DMs on the groups that I'm a part of every day asking like, oh, like I just spent $200 on ads. I got zero sales. Like, what do I do? Like, 
should I quit? I'm like, no, my friend, like, that's not, I've probably spent like $20,000 in the past two years alone just on ads with like little to no profit at all. Probably like no profit, honestly. You know, the number one advice that I, that I got actually when I was starting off that actually kind of hindered my performance was that all these mentors were saying, you know, don't get emotionally attached to products, don't, which is true, but I was taking that more as like, oh, if it doesn't, if I do one test and it fails, I'll just move on. And it's like, no. When I uh, tested this product, it was actually failing for like two weeks. Like I, I didn't get any sales for the first two weeks. And that's when a lot of people would quit, right? They'd just say like, okay, I'm getting no sales. My ads stink or the products, they, no, they wouldn't say the, the ads stink. They would say that the product stinks. It's not a winning product, so I'll move on. But like, that's just not how paid ads work. And you, there's a certain amount of optimization that goes through both TikTok and, and Facebook where the, the algorithm needs to spend a certain amount to find the target audience of who you're actually selling to. What do you think is the, uh, like the easiest way for somebody who's just getting into it to start? Is it just uh, TikTok organic? 100%, yeah. Jordan Bowen actually just did his company. He's, he's completely uh, transparent about Turning Hearts. I recommend you guys uh, going on TikTok and looking up Turning Hearts. He's made like 150,000 or something in a month and it's like 90% profit margins. So he's profited like $130,000 US, like in a month, which is crazy. Um, because yeah, organic is powerful. Organic really, like you have no cost of, of uh, advertising. That's usually like your highest cost is advertising. So yeah, highly recommend getting into organic if you're gonna do that. It only takes one creative, one good creative to, to really set things off. So make as many creatives as possible. Okay, so before we started filming, we were talking about, you know, there's a lot of people that get in this space and they get, their first success and then like from there they decide to become a mentor mm -hmm. and then they decide that they're gonna teach people how to drop ship yeah. and you know like from my from my perspective I think a lot of these people are they, they get lucky and then they decide that they are worthy of teaching people and that's how they make a majority of their money when in reality they're probably not actually that educated on the field. So like, what, what is your opinion on mentorship? Do you think that it's worth it to actually pay people for help or, or can you find everything that you need to know online and through just trial and error? I definitely think it's super important to invest in yourself and to do your own research. So like for me, I've probably spent like close to five grand on mentorships and stuff for the past two years, maybe a little bit less than five grand, maybe four grand, um, just off of like two or three mentorships. But um, a lot of those were actually paid like by month, so it might be more, I don't know. But I'm a huge advocate for investing in yourself, especially if you know that you want to do this, and you know that this is like, you know, what you want to do for a career, 100%, you know, invest in yourself. But when you're investing in yourself, you have to do your own research, right? I, I, like, like you just said, there's a lot of mentors out there that are just like, you know, clickbaiters. They just post content for the sake of posting content. They don't actually know what they're doing. So, you know, the biggest thing there is, is understanding who you're following, like really dive deep in and understanding why they're doing what they're doing. Is there like, you know, is there an advantage to why they're doing what they're doing? Are they actually, like, do they actually teach what they apply? Or are they just teaching something that they've, you know, picked up of other influencers and it's just a cycle of toxicity, right? I would say it was 100% worth um, investing in uh, the right mentors. Like I said, name dropping Tony Matusiak, Tuzer, and uh, Jordan Bowen, or Bone, uh, as well as Jordan Welch. Those are like my number like my top three that I've invested in, and I can advocate for their content because uh, it's worked for me personally. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I don't get anything from saying that, but they, they have taught me pretty much most of what I know. I have done my own research on YouTube and stuff, and if you're just getting started and you have zero capital, like don't, don't, inv don't buy these $1,000 mentorships. Any final words for the people watching who are thinking about getting in this business model or have been in this business model for a while but haven't seen the success that you have seen recently? Keep going, dude, like just stay consistent. It will happen. Your success is inevitable as long as you don't quit. And um, you know, if you have the right mindset and you grind every day and uh, you, know, you grind sustainably, I'm not a huge advocate for like just going ghost and not talking to your family or friends and just being like this crazy, you know how those, those, those the monk mode or whatever? Monk mode, yeah. yeah. You're not gonna really, you might get somewhere quicker if you do it that way. I never really approached it that way. I just approached it more you know, long-term longevity in mind. So yeah, just uh, you know, keep your, your mental health in mind, but uh, do as much as you can every single day and just stay consistent and you'll get there. As long as you have the right mindset and you don't have a limiting mindset, you have an abundance mindset and you genuinely believe in your ability to do it. It's just, you gotta be patient and this stuff takes time sometimes.